as the summer turns to autumn and the days get shorter and there's a chill in the evening air and the leaves start falling down from the trees and the trees start to become barren. This can be a time when a lot of grief can emerge. And this grief can be connected to goal traumas, for example. It can be connected to, you know, something that you worked hard for that you never got or something that was involuntarily taken from you, something that you lost without your consent, something that you had to let go of, you had no choice. Um, autumn can be a time, like for me, the month of autumn is interesting. Autumn is a time, uh, October, I'm sorry, the month of October is interesting. Uh, for me personally, October, there's a lot of anniversaries in October. Like my mother's death was in October, my father's birthday, today, Col Columbus Day slash Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, you know, three years ago, Beth and I and Mary Sheila and several of us, uh, you know, in Sonoma County, California, went through what at that time was like the largest wildfire in the history of the state of California. And guess what, you guys, that was 36,000 acres. You know, we've had millions of acres burn since then. So, you know, there can be a time, like there can be a time in this time of year when we sort of look back, we recollect, we reflect, and there might be a sadness that comes up. So I want to talk about, you know, how to take a generative relationship to experiences like that so that we're not completely overwhelmed by them, so that the grief doesn't have to completely collapse into depression. So the poet Rumi, there's a, a quote from Rumi that says, grief is the garden of compassion. So those of you, I, I know from working with some of you over time, you know, you've had a lot of grief that you've had to deal with and things that you've lost. And, you know, if you want to sing back up to me on this, uh, you know that, you know, grief can be something we can kind of contract against it and we want to avoid it and we don't really want to face it and we might keep ourselves busy to not face what's really in our heart. And we might also get that from the, from the, the um, collective, you know, like, oh, get over it, you'll be fine, you know, it'll be okay. Um, I wanna suggest the opposite to you, that actually with grief, what I have found helpful, and I know some of you have found this helpful, is actually to become still and to come into that place of equanimity where you're not denying your experience, but you're actually giving it space. You're placing whatever you are grieving about into a larger womb of space. And when that happens, grief becomes something like uh, it tenderizes our hearts. You know, it's like meat tenderizer. It's like, you know, you pound on the meat and you pound on the meat and you pound on the meat until it becomes tender. You know, those connective tissues all break down and you just have, you know, the sadness in space. And then grief becomes something that actually is like a cord or a link that connects us to the rest of humanity because really who among us has not lost something or someone, you know, whether it was a dream or whether it was a person or, or a home or whatever, uh, you know, we've all lost something. So that grief becomes what binds us. And, you know, the grief minor might not diminish. That's not really, you know, it's not about making it go away, but it's just about taking a generative relationship to that experience where there's something that you can actually harvest from it that can nourish you, nourish your world. So <clears throat> taking a generative relationship to loss, taking a generative relationship to so-called failure, going into those experiences and uh, harvesting the fruits from them, 
Um, that's our task right now. And this is, this is precisely the process by which the queen transmutes her sorrow into leadership. And by leadership, what I mean here is communion between her soul and that which is greater than her own being. So through the mining and the harvesting of her sorrow, the queen receives her divine marching orders. And then she's able to manifest who she authentically is in her life going forward. 